it's up to the parents and up to the consumers to start this dialogue and start talking about it whether it's useful for the kids or not and to share their opinion uh, on public platforms openly without any fear of defamation lawsuits or takedowns Hey guys, welcome to Backstage with Millionaires. I'm Caleb, your host, and today we have Pradeep Punia back on the show. Back in November of 2020, White Hat Jr. filed a $2.7 million defamation lawsuit against him, but just last week they withdrew that same lawsuit, and here you are back on the show to talk about what your experience during that lawsuit was and what are your reflections on the entire experience and how do you see things in the ed tech space and specifically focusing on White Hat Jr., uh, how do you see those things going forward into the future? So before we jump into talking about White Hat Jr., uh, I just wanted to say first or ask you, how are you doing? Like, how are things going now that the lawsuit is finally over? Yeah, so it's a good thing that happened. Uh, a lot of pressure has been taken off from my my side. Uh, yeah, but yeah, actually the timing of it could have been better at least if it was taken few weeks earlier or maybe i don't know how many but some weeks from now uh, it would have been a much better point that i could have celebrated right now it's a very sad state in my region due to the corona and all of that yeah but yeah something would happen and uh, i also like uh, at this point i want to uh, thank all the people who supported me especially the people from reddit linkedin and telegram uh, people worked for, uh, with me and uh, in my telegram groups uh, thank you to all that and it was really great to see like how the entire you know ingenious community came together for this issue i think mostly because we all have gone through this phase where something is pushed on us uh, for our careers and we know what happens to that so yeah, a lot of people came in support and thank you to all of them Definitely. I think when we last spoke, things were picking up. The publicity was there. People were talking about you and this lawsuit and White Hat Jr. But since that last conversation that we had, it kind of exploded, right? This is something that people across India are now talking about and the community surrounding you and supporting you has definitely grown as well. So I think they're definitely curious to know what, what happens next. Um, and I'm going to ask you that a little bit later on. But the first thing I want to know is why do you think White Hat Jr. decided to withdraw the lawsuit? Personally, I was very surprised when this happened. And I think a lot of people in the public were did not see this coming. So I'd love to get your take on it. So first of all, like I don't even understand, like, uh, why did they file the case in the first place? That's also a very strange thing to do. So that also doesn't make much sense. Uh, I talked to my lawyer and she told me like this kind of thing usually doesn't happen. Companies don't take their case back. Uh, and uh, whether it be like uh, HUL has done something in the past and other companies, they don't take the case back. But it's uh, they have taken it back. Maybe some sense prevailed over them or I don't know what happened. But yeah, journalists should ask them like why, I take, why have they taken the case back? Yeah. Yeah, it was it was definitely surprising. And I wonder if, to me, the way that this looks is that they're almost admitting defeat or that they're, they're deciding that it's no longer worthwhile. And I wonder if that has something to do with the fact that you didn't just shut up and roll over and sort of play by their rules. They might have thought that that was the response that you were going to give them after they took you to court. And instead, you just made your voice even louder. So uh, the next question that I have is, what kind of impact have you seen the fact that you've spoken up and, and spoken out against this company? What kind of impact have you seen as a result of your actions? So, yeah, the first thing that I was trying to achieve was that this FOMO behind uh, coding mania, the sense, and this has stopped uh, to a lot of extent. Now people are aware of it. Uh, people understand that uh, there's no need to push your six-year-old kids into coding. Uh, that something would happen. And the dialogue has started. Actually, I'm not a parent. I'm not a ch child. So 
it's up to the parents and up to the consumers to start this dialogue and start talking about it whether it's useful for the kids or not and to share their opinion uh, on public platforms openly without any fear of defamation lawsuits or take downs so this has started uh, this is something good as which is happening now and uh, from uh, what i've uh, known from some other company uh, insider is that the conversion rates from the sales call which these companies make has gone down from what i know uh, that something would happen that is something good which is happening so yeah parents are now more aware of it uh, people can openly post about it and uh, yeah that's interesting though that the uh, you say the conversion rates have have come down so essentially the reason that they took you to court in the first place was and and sued you for 2.7 million dollars is that they were claiming that that was the negative financial impact that your, your alleged defamation had caused their company but it seems like yes. they withdrew the case after they saw an even more negative financial impact as a result of taking you to court yeah. and, you to court. and yeah. having you speak out against them as a result result yeah. could be like uh, in the lawsuit that they filed uh, it was written that uh, the 20 crore mark uh, the this value was estimated uh, based on their numbers saying their conversion rates have dropped from 13% to 11% or 9% i don't remember that but so it uh, from that conversion ratio uh, they had calculated this 20 crore uh, loss and from what i know from some other company the company which was not even uh, showing such uh, such ads and which and their name uh, their name also never came into the picture and their sales have also gone down from 10% to 5% uh, conversion rates so that's uh, i think yeah they were maybe they were losing money on this now so what you're saying is that it's possible that you speaking out against this one specific company may have actually had a ripple effect across the entire indian edtech space yeah the that, actually that's what my aim was i was not against one company or uh, like uh, uh, i never had any personal vendetta like i spoke about it in some other interview that i don't want people to lose their jobs especially in the covid uh, pandemic thing going on so my point was uh, majorly about this coding fomo which was growing which these companies were using to sell the product and to a lot of extent that has stopped now i think some people will still buy it uh, because some parents have a lot of money and they want to try out different stuff but uh, it's up to them i can't you know like enforce any everybody to not buy it it's their choice and but a lot of parents have understood it especially from uh, we were able to uh, you know educate people from non technical background as well to understand that this coding is not a compulsion for 6 year old kids you can obviously learn it at later stage and yeah hmm and that's i mean i i see that as one benefit that a lot of these maybe edtech companies have backed off a bit um and they're not trying to uh market this this kind of course as heavily as they were before uh and especially they're not using this fomo tactic tactic as much as they were before are there any other benefits that you've seen uh resulting from you deciding to speak out against white hat junior yeah so see initially when i started posting about those wolf gupta ads uh on simple google search you wouldn't find anything about wolf gupta and now internet is full of everything about wolf gupta so that has changed now there are no take downs uh, you can post about the company or the the employee employees can talk about it as parents you can talk about it as a student you can post your reviews so that's a good thing that has happened and uh, yeah and also like i have seen that yes. free funds point of view as well uh now they are like drastically less number of cases where parents are calling me and telling me that they are not getting the refunds uh as compared to earlier so i think the company is working on that so that's a good thing so yeah uh we'll have to see how it goes in the future as well but as of now there are some good changes 
Sure, sure. And probably some uh, internal changes too, because I know talking off camera, you had mentioned that um, White Hat Junior employees and, and Baiju's employees had been contacting you to kind of share their plight. But now it seems like maybe those kinds of calls have, have dissipated a little bit. Yeah. So yeah, now that uh, more people came to know about me, I was expecting more calls, but uh, those calls have dropped. Uh, it's much less than what I used to get earlier. So either company is changing something internally. So if they are doing that, it's a good thing. I hope they continue to do it in the future as well. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that. Sure. And then in terms of the, I know we are talking very specifically about White Hat Junior here, but then if we zoom out a little bit and look at the ed tech space at large, um, you know, how, how do you see the current situation shaping up, uh, especially during this second, you know, wave of COVID-19 here in India? And also a lot of these companies now choosing to go international, right? Like, what, you know, yeah. how would you describe the current situation in the ed tech space? So, yeah, like, because of this COVID situation, these companies got a, like, this was a golden period to expand because the schools are shut down and they have a really good opportunity to expand. And I think some companies, I think all the of these companies are expanding beyond their own uh, ability to control it now. Because I think the BDAs are themselves finding loopholes in the system and exploiting that. Could you tell me, sorry, quickly what, what a BDA is? Uh, business Development Associate. Basically, it's the salesman. Okay. So, okay. recently I uh, read an article on the KIN written by Olina Benerjee. Yeah. The same uh, journalist who wrote the first article on this issue when I was I started doing it. So, thanks to her. So, yeah. So, that article is about a, a Vedantu. So, what's happening is, over there is that uh, some BDAs Vedantu had a policy, they came up with a new policy that anytime refund, you can get refund at any time, not 14 day mark. So the BDA started uh, misusing this and they started, you know, booking the uh, course for their own relatives, friends or in fake names. And once their sales target was achieved, they started applying for the refund. So this is happening in all the edtechs that it's the BDAs which uh, some of the BDAs, I would say, uh, end up misusing the policies for the comp of the company. So that is something which is happening. Interesting. I think after that, uh, Vedantu took that thing back, uh, the anytime refund policy. Although I'm not sure what happened after that. Sure. But it sounds like a, a very classic case of sort of un unchecked and almost unsustainable growth where these companies are just aiming to to get bigger at, and bigger at any cost even if uh internal things are are going wrong like for example bda is taking advantage of some offer or yeah I, i'm not sure if that's the case ac across the edtech space like or if this is just a problem for vedantu specifically like it, it, you know are there other things that are that are going on similar to this or is this mainly focused on vedantu no, in every edtech which uh, every edtech which has BDS, uh, which have sales team, uh, there are such kind of issues everywhere. So not just uh, these two three companies. Everywhere you will find this comp this kind of issues. Because okay. I think it, okay. it becomes really hard for them to keep a check on every single sale. How do they keep a check on uh, what the BDA will end up saying? But at the end of it, it's their responsibility. You know, it's your BDA. It's your responsibility. But uh, it's certainly because the BDA will also, will, you know, at the end, uh, will think about his own salary and will end up saying anything to sell the product, uh, any kind of false claims or whatever figures and all. That. Sure. I can I can totally understand how that would happen. The, the company wants to grow. So they set a really large quota, meaning that the salesperson needs to do a really a lot of work to, lot. to meet that quota and basically the easiest way to do to get a lot of people to buy something is to use, you know, fear tactics or FOMO tactics or, you know, whatever sort of unethical or, or immoral technique to get someone to, to, to buy a product or a service. And if there isn't, 
you know, a quality team to monitor these, these salespeople, then it's just a, you know, it's, it's not a, an if it's going to happen, it's, it's more of a when and, and how much is it going to happen. Yeah. So what is, I mean, I don't, I don't know if you have an answer to this question, but, you know, there's obviously some, some issues, right? There's some problems going on in the ed tech space. Um, things are not all, you know, rosy. What's the solution? How, how, you know, how can these companies uh, fix this? Or is it on the consumers to fix it? Or is it maybe some external force like, you know, the government? Like what, what would you say is the solution to this, to these problems? So, yeah, the problem in itself is very complex. Okay, so because there are many players into it. The IT companies, parents, students, government, regulatory bodies, I think everybody need to come together and keep up with the dialogue and come up with some solutions to it. Uh, also, like, now parents should uh, be open about the experiences and the students as well. Like, if they like the product or not, so that other consumers will get an idea about the product and the pair and the company will also get some feedback uh, also now the regulatory part like i'm thinking about it and see what happens in india is it's a complex thing that regulations are very either the government doesn't have any regulations or something and when they do the regulations are so hard that it becomes difficult for the newcomers to enter the business so, uh, for example, take the example of CBSE schools. If you go around India, you will just find this, most of the schools are owned by either politicians, MLA, MPs, or celebrities, cricketers, businessmen. New people uh, don't uh, end up opening schools. It's really difficult to get the license and all, uh, and all the approvals. So, the regulations are, you know, stopping new people to enter into that school business thing. And if we end up having some regulations and startup for it, take that can, you know, because the big players will obviously will figure out a way to get all the regulations, all the checks and balances because they have a lot of money, but the new player, new startups will might find it difficult to enter into the game. So it's a double edged sword. Uh, so that's uh, something which needs to be think about. And the, I think government should also come up with e-learning platforms, something like Khan Academy or something, because the schools are shut down for almost a year now and it can, you know, continue for the next year as well. So the all the state boards, uh, CBSE, I think it's time for them to come up with their own e-learning platform which provides education for free. You know, we don't know for how long this corona situation will prevail and uh, the government should do something. It's not that hard. The money required would be somewhat reasonable and the government should do something about it. Yeah. Hmm. That's an interesting, and, like, uh, interesting uh, proposition. proposition. Yeah. Also, I think like some people should come up with the alternatives, you know, like uh, there is some through the comments I came to know about uh, some guy called some YouTube channel called Physics Wala. So that these people, I think, changed the entire game. What earlier used to happen was the 11th or 12th class IIT JE coaching used to cost around, what, 1 lakh rupees around. And what these guys did was they started giving away the course for just 1,000 rupees. So because at the, at the scale which they were, uh, you know, getting the money from, the number of students they had, even 1,000 rupees... Uh, you know, gave them a lot of money. So they didn't care. So I think for, for uh, you know, KG to 12 section as well, this business side as well, somebody should uh, come up with some alternatives and provide education at much, much affordable prices. And for for those new players, you know, their business can boom up. Definitely. And this raises one interesting topic that um, I've been thinking about. Like, if... If such a course, for example, this uh, physics well, as you're saying, is offered for free as opposed to charging a yeah. thousand rupees, do you think that it would be as popular? No, I think I'm not sure. I haven't seen all the videos. I'm not into IDG preparation now. I gave my exam like a decade ago. But uh, what I've seen, many of the uh, videos are already out there for free. 
most of the content is for free i don't know what percentage of the content is for free and what percentage they are selling but uh, as far as i know a lot of stuff is already out there free there's uh, some uh, there's another youtube channel called study iq they are also doing on working on the similar idea they are providing a lot of content for free uh, it's owned by gaurav garg and they are providing almost everything for free they are charging for very little uh, and that's the strategy because if they have a lot of students then even with very little fees they can make decent money so that's a new thing which is happening because of the internet and that's really appreciable yeah wow that's a great approach kind of like this freemium model where you get most of it yeah. for free but if you want to upgrade or you want you know access to premium content then you can pay a small fee and and have access to that yeah so yeah some of these some of these competitors that are that are coming in and offering things at a at a discounted price it seems like you know that's a that's a good thing and it forces everybody to stay competitive i've always felt like the more players you have in a space the more crowded it is the better it is for the consumer um so overall you know here in india in the edtech space would you say that things are getting better or would you say that they're getting worse or is it more complicated than that i would say it's complicated than that because uh, see see everybody is talking about iit je and trust me iit jee is not the problem the problem is that we don't have enough number of seats the problem is that we don't have enough number of colleges and the ones which we have they need to be you know worked upon so let's take the example of amazon academy they have entered into indian market and the first courses which they are providing is about idj and i won't comment on the uh, content the quality of the content because i haven't used it but i'm talking about you know the idea behind it like what are they trying to do the amazon owned by one of the richest man in the world they are entering into indian market and they are saying like we will help you prepare for idj hey man like we can prepare for the r exam ourselves we don't need your help uh, earlier as well every single year the number of students who are you know competent enough to go into an engineering college is way beyond than the number of seats in idj so idj is the bottleneck it's and that's the problem and instead of working on the solution these companies are just working on the problem itself what are we going to achieve over there we need to we need better colleges if like if some other player is entering into this uh, you know idj coaching okay but the richest company in the world is entering into our market and saying we'll help you prepare for the idj it doesn't make sense you have enough money to open new colleges in itself you know do that let's see if you can do that why you you know making this competitive exam more competitive what is the point of that nobody's uh, opening up colleges nobody's uh, opening up uh, edtech companies for let's say different engineering streams electrical stream tell me a single uh, edtech company which is providing uh, you know education for civil engineers mechanical engineers nobody is doing that they are just saying we'll help you prepare for the idj exam clear, clear the exam go to the college and do what come back as a salesman and work in the same company so that's a dangerous loop which is going on right now i i have a sort of a counter argument there which is that there's pro- i don't know the exact statistics but there's probably a lot of colleges there's probably a lot of universities but people tend to focus on the top ones right they don't want to go to anything inferior they're not willing to i don't know if there's like empty colleges like for example in the united states there's a lot of colleges that are trying to fill their seats but everybody's focusing on stanford they're focusing on harvard they're focusing on these really prestigious ivy league universities i'm not sure if that's the case here in india but but it might be right it might actually be sort of the public's opinion of it's it's a, it's a status symbol right i graduated from an iit or yeah, it is. graduated from bits plenty right so, so maybe the solu- yeah go ahead yeah it is yeah it is the iid is a way to a hyped brand value right now it's it's a good college but it's not that that uh, if you can't go into an iid you won't get a, a decent salary afterwards 
you can still work through a private college itself so that uh, mentality should be changed in indian people that uh, don't run after the tag value run after education if you are really interested into that but i am talking about uh, like nobody is working on the solution part people are working on the problem part you know the obviously somebody will clear idj somebody will clear the neat exam somebody will clear those seats and because we have like 100 times the number of students as compared to the seats so that's not the problem that we don't have enough students to fill up the colleges seats it's the problem is that the colleges uh, are not that great uh, there are less opportunities after doing those degrees those are the problems work on that interesting yeah i think it's probably difficult even if you studied at these prestigious schools to you know find a possibly i'm not entirely sure but it might be difficult to find uh employment maybe the you know the job market is is a bit crowded i think that just comes though when you have a massive population like india yeah so yeah i, I guess that's, that's, I guess that's, that's the that's, unemployment and the lack of good colleges that's the problem not iid jee yeah entrance yeah. exam is not yeah. the problem for us we can clear that ourselves in a day mhm yeah i hope i hope the public sentiment towards these these training institutes or these uh these coaching institutes maybe shifts and and changes and people realize the resources that are available to them on the internet for free or for a very cheap price so that uh but but then again amazon i think is offering this this program at a very affordable rate a- am i wrong about that i'm not sure i haven't checked the prices but uh, yeah actually you know that's also a problem in india like when you provide something for free people don't appreciate it you know khan academy is already out there and providing almost everything for free and they have al- already launched the hindi courses and most probably probably they will be launching in other languages as well in the future but people i think they have this complex about it that uh, if we pay for something the value suddenly goes up uh, the quality goes up but it's not the case uh, over youtube you can find almost anything for free and you can learn anything you want to but uh, still these uh, paid courses are making money so that uh, mentality also needs to be changed sure and i think this is not just this is not just india this is everywhere right if you yeah. if you pay for it, if you pay for a gym membership then you feel obligated to go and work yeah, out exactly. but really you could be doing the exact same thing in your house it's your body yeah. right you have some yeah, right. heavy stuff in your house that you can lift i'm sure you can get a yoga yeah. mat and and start losing weight or getting fit but people just want to have some sort of thing hanging over their head that sort of forces them to to do something that they wouldn't otherwise feel like they want to do. Um so moving away from the edtech space and and talking about colleges and and all of this stuff. I wanted to know moving forward now that that Whitehead Junior has withdrawn this case and you know you're 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 basically free from something that has been hanging over your head now for for like several months. Several what's months. next what's next for you? Are are you just going to relax, take it easy and and sort of go back to being a normal human being or are you going to to do something else? I, I'm curious. Okay, so there are many things which could be done uh, at this point. Uh some people have been asking me what are your alternatives about this coding thing? And I thought about it and i think i have some ideas how you can teach computer science con- computer science concepts to kids on a playground you don't need a computer screen or a laptop and the same concepts can be taught while the kids are playing so i'm working on those ideas and i'm you know working with the kids in my locality and checking out what are the results and once i have those results and once i've checked with the uh, what minimum age kids can learn that thing i'll you know post something about it and we'll try it out so yeah that's also one option and uh, apart from that actually now i feel like ignorance is ignorance is bliss so earlier i didn't know about so many issues which are going on and now a lot of people are doing me emails and now i know like there's so many wrong things which are happening in the india right now whether it be healthcare or finance sector and i'm overwhelmed because of that now 
like it's it's really bad whatever is happening out there in the world in india and i'm looking into those things uh on what how can i help those situ- in those situation i'm looking into that apart from that i also have my exams lined up for the upsc preparation i'm doing that as well so i'm thinking about that uh so yeah many things are to be done and i'm looking into that sure so you're not just going to put your feet up and and relax you've got a lot of things in the works yeah there are, there are many issues which uh, con- uh, which about which i'm concerned uh so i'll look into those i'm working behind the scenes and i'll you know i'll be i'll be back <laughs> Yeah. Sure. <laughs> You'll be back. Well, we'll keep our eyes peeled and and I look forward to uh hearing from you in the future. But uh one thing I would like to say is that, you know, you've already done a lot. Um I just want to say that for myself and also for the community. I think like people I I've really never seen or or met someone like you, someone who's actually taken a stand and Uh, uh you didn't really have a choice after the lawsuit was filed right you couldn't i mean you can't just make that go away they're they're taking you to court but i think the fact that you stood up to them and you spoke out against them instead of keeping quiet uh perhaps if you had just shut up right away they might have withdrawn their case earlier who knows right maybe they wouldn't have but uh so maybe there's an argument there that you had no choice but to speak up but i would say that that was a that was a brave thing to do and especially here in India where you know and and this is the case everywhere but um you know being in India myself and and studying or looking at businesses and looking at what's going on in the business landscape it it happens here frequently where companies are able to bully the people right the the small individual people uh their customers or people who speak out against them on social media they they have a lot of power and uh especially if you have money you can get a lot done just by right paying the right people um but you know that's that's changing i think people are waking up and they're realizing that they do have a voice and you're somebody who has actually made people more aware of that fact more than i think they they had been in the past and the fact that whitehead junior has withdrawn this case is is real evidence of that i think a lot of people were already sort of sounding the death now for you they were assuming that you were just going to get destroyed by whitehead junior and and t- i mean 2.7 million dollars is a lot of money right and everybody was hopeful that you wouldn't be destroyed by them but at the same time th- th- there's not a lot of precedent for that right typically the big companies win against the little guy so the fact that you stood up and you actually won uh or that they withdrew the case is uh something that i think gives a lot of people hope and and courage so yeah th- thank you for doing what you've done so far and again i look forward to seeing what you do in the future Yeah. yeah. I have a, like right. a couple of more things yeah. to say. All right. Sure. Uh like uh sure. yeah, I like guys uh you know the corona is really spreading. It's really getting dark. The situation is really bad. So take care of yourself and take care of your family. Wear mask and take all the precautions. And apart from that, uh there's one help that I need from you guys. Uh there's a guy called Vivek Kumar. and his sister is suffering from cancer and with 15 minutes maybe you will be the you know lucky guy who will be the match donor match uh, stem cell donor and uh, the link will be in the comments so please if you have the time please help her out so yeah all right and we'll pin that comment as well as yeah well. thank you awesome all right i really appreciate you coming back on the show pradeep And uh again I wish you all the best uh even during these difficult times I I I can't wait to see what you do. Thank you thank you. <laughs>